up? This is Rev Run. You're chilling with Street Line. Curse blow for Street Line. Do your thing, baby. Represent. I love you. All right. Hey, my name is Bobby Brown. My name is Ralph Tresvan. I'm Mike Ben. That's right, and this is Ron DeVoe with the T in hand, huh? Yeah, and if you ain't watching Street Line, what you are you watching? watching again. You ain't watching yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing all day? You're watching Street Line, cause there's no place else to go. What's up? This is Monifa, and you're watching Street Line. Say it loud! Get it! 
Get it! Get it! the merciful. We thank him for all of his prophets and the scriptures which they brought. I am a student of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and I could never thank Allah enough for him and God's intervention in our affairs in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, the great Mahdi who came among us and raise the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for us. I greet all of you, my brothers and my sisters, with the greeting words of peace. We say, look at these brothers around me. Look in their faces. Look at the clean look that they have. These ain't no choir boys. I mean, I was a choir boy. I can't tell no lie. I was in the choir in the Episcopalian Church. But my love has always been for us, for black people. But the brothers that are with me, they're just like you. Some came out of prison. Yes. Some okay. came out of the crack house. That's right. Some used heroin. That's right. Some were pimps. Wow. Some were, yeah. Some were hustlers. Some of the sisters used to prostitute. Others came out of college. But no matter where we came from, we have a similar problem. And no matter where they came from, we didn't condemn them for what they were. We talked to them about what they could become. Listen to what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to us. He said, brother, I'm like a piece of junk that Farad Muhammad took off the junk pile and polished me up and put me back on the junk pile to show the rest of the pieces of junk that you can shine too. We are you and you are we. You can be greater than what you are, but you've got to believe that yourself. Now, we know that they don't tell us how great we really are. So I don't have a lot of time. So in the few minutes that I'm going to be here, let me tell you something about you that we were taught. Oh, and by the way, let me say this. You know this man, Farad Muhammad? He's an Arab from a black father and a white mother. He came to North America to raise the black man of America up. He found a black man from among us from Georgia who was named Elijah Poole who only went to the fourth grade of school. Check this out now. He took that man and worked with him for three years and four months and then left. But when he left, he made a master. The way to do it, you gotta do what you gotta do. But when you do it, there's Rikers Island. <laughs> uh, when you do what you do, what you think you gotta do, there's a federal penitentiary. So, and you look at how hard it is, you know. I mean, for powdered cocaine, we might get, you know, a little light smack on the wrist. But crack cocaine, they lay a five-year hike on you. Now, you might be having your weapons with you today. I understand. But Lord have mercy, if you get stopped. All right, come on, just searching everybody. 
Hatch you down. What is this? This Negro got a gun. Well, either you get shot, and most of the time you might get shot just for having a gun. Then they say, well, you don't have no license for this, do you? No, I don't, I don't have no license. Well, good, you're going to do three years at a minimum. Come on with us. So after you've been charged with a felony, now you can't vote. See, that's how you get young black people in jail and take away whatever little rights you thought you had as a citizen. It's gone now. So when you come out of prison after doing your little time, they know you'll be back. They just dust off your cell and put your name on it. And say, He's coming back. And you come on out here and say, well, man, I'm going to try to go straight. Because everybody goes straight when they're in prison, you know. Yeah. You got time to think about God, you know, and get the Holy Ghost. You know? And then when you come out, you're trying to go straight, but nobody got a job for you. When you go somewhere to get a job, you got to put down on your application that you were arrested, you were sent to prison. Then they say, we're sorry, we can't hire you. So what do you do? You're right back where you were before, and then you end right back up where you were before. See, this is a game that is being played, and it's robbing black people of the little bit of citizenship and rights that you thought you had. Most black people talk about the, is it the, the 13th and Amendment? Yes, sir. That conferred citizenship on us. And listen, they never asked us. Uh, Sam? Killing each other. Look, how did you get the name Gomez? How did you get the name Ramirez, how did you get the name Sanchez? Where do you get that name? See, the Spaniards that conquered this part of the world, they, are we here, slaves? Well, how did you get light? See, See this is what they call mulatto. Mulatto. So then after we become mulatto, we think we're better than blacko. <laughs> so now we're divided in our color. Some of us got curly hair. Some of us got kinky hair. Some of us got broad nose. Some of us got nice little feline nose. Some of us got big lips, the kissable kind. And others got hardly any lips left. <laughs> and so now we are at war with each other. Well, this is Sanchez, this is Gomez. That's right. But then the French, they had us in Haiti, right. they had us in Guadeloupe, right. they had us in Martinique. Right. See? Well, what is your name? Oh, my name is Francois. Right. My name is Jean Jacques de Well, that's good. How did you get to speak French? You're not a Frenchman. Do you speak Patois? Yeah, we do too in Jamaica, man. What you call? We fix up the king language so he can't understand a thing we say, you know. Here we are, divided like this. The French got us, the Spanish got us, the English got us, the Dutch got us, and we are all now looking different, thinking that we all are really different when we're all a part of the same original family of our planet. So, I know I, I gotta go. But let me finish with this. There's no change coming for us 
out of the sky. That's right. That's right. I'm going to say it again. Yes, sir. Brothers and sisters, you can pray. Huh? Yes. In the middle of the service, somebody came up and raised some money. It's a funeral service. They said, we need to take up a collection. For who? The mother. I mean, the church was packed. And the people went in their pocket. I gave some more. And the sister, she had a friend that was with her. And when they went back, the preachers went back in the back to count the money. She went back there for her friend. They locked her out of the room. And then when the body was being buried, she called for me and another reverend. She said, we never got the money that was raised. Now I'm saying that to say this to pastors. When you love money more than you love the people, then one day the people are going to cut you down. You know, because our people are sick and tired of people hustling them, pimping them, misusing them, and you're doing it today at the peril of your life because these young people you see, they're killers already. They ain't got nothing to lose if they take out a robber and a thief that's hustling people who are in the pain of the loss of a loved one. So it reminds me of what's in the scripture. Jesus said, all that came before me were thieves and robbers. I'm saying this to us, man. That poor woman, she got a little money that didn't take it all. But she never got what the people gave to her. And some of the preachers, they divided that money up. This is Chicago. I don't know whether they do that kind of thing in New York. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, they do, sir. They do? Yes, they do, sir. They do worse than that. Uh, somebody said they do worse than that. Well, my dear family, we have to learn to love each other. So, that you will forgive them for their sins, no matter what we have done, you will wipe that slate clean. Bring us together, Allah, and make us again once what we once were, the mother, the father, the architect of civilization. I ask this in the name of your servant, Jesus the Christ. I ask this in the name of your servant, Muhammad Ibn Abdullah. I ask this in the name of your servant, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters. May Allah bless you all. Step back a little bit before we start moving. Step them back. Back it up, back it up. Let's go, Tom. Brothers and sisters, we're very appreciative on behalf of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan for your presence. Let's give the minister a hand here this afternoon. He showed his love. He wanted to show love to one another. We are very, very thankful of your presence. To our black family, our Latino family, to the nation of God's and earth, to the motorcycle clubs out here.
I'm Assemblyman Eric Stevenson. I represent the 79th District of the South Bronx. It's a pleasure to have been here um, hearing the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan give the message of peace and love in our community and calling for the people to put down guns and rid them out of our communities, calling on the people to rid of using drugs for those who may use it, and calling on the younger to continue at their education and become predict productive members of society. We, we are pleased that everyone came together here in the basketball court at the Forest Houses. Um, we, it was all love and we're gonna to work together to change our community. We can't rely on others to do for us what we should be working to do for ourselves. We took the responsibility of men and women of our communities and we joined in and we did, did exactly that today. We will continue to fight against the illegal stop and frisk until that practice is taken out of our communities and we continue to bring um, the message of love and hope and peace to all our residents of the South Bronx and outside of the South Bronx. We have to be together. We have to stop doing the negative things. And once again, we're going to continue to stop um, this illegal stop and frisk of our community as I'm committed to do. Thank you all. God bless. Yes, uh, this is Grandmaster Melly Mel out here in uh, Forest Projects with the uh, anti-violence rallies. Listen to the uh, minister speak. It was a pleasure. He just came out and spoke very beautifully and, and really showed some love to the neighborhood. And now, after it's all said and done, it's up to us, like he said, to, you know, pick up the torch and just make sure that we are, as grown folks, be the ruler of our own destiny and the leader of our communities, because as grown people, that's what we need to do. So I think that today was the beginning of the, a whole new uprising as far as how people just have to be responsible for what's going on in their own neighborhood and police their own neighborhood and stop waiting for the police to come in and do whatever they think is necessary. I think it's for us to be self-sufficient and self-reliant and for us to show these young people the right path like how we learned the right path in the old days. So that's what I think it's all about and I think it's the beginning of a beautiful thing and we'd like to thank the minister for coming through and I think I'll go check him out Tuesday when he's in Harlem. Peace. Peace. This is Zulu King Jeff. I'm very happy to be out here. Uh, I've always been a supporter of the Nation of Islam, Brother Farrakhan, uh, Minister Kevin Muhammad, and all the other brothers, Brother Arthur Forex. And, you know, like the, 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 what the minister said that really hit home is that we have, to, we have the power ourselves to change our environment and change our situation. So I hope that, uh, you know, we're going to take the necessary steps to make sure that you know, all the, the violence and all the travesties and all the laws of life and the love that we're supposed to have for one another is manifest. So I'm looking forward to Tuesday's meeting up in Harlem. Peace. To show love for self, love for each other, and it's about solidarity and unity and taking back our neighborhoods and waking our people up to the knowledge of self or who they are and to stop the killing in the street. So we got to get back in the streets and speak to our brothers and sisters to wake up. This is Brother Africa Bambada, the Amin Ra, Universal Hip Hop Culture, and you're watching Street Lines. Peace.